Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We had our big adventure, rode our bicycles from Buffalo to Rochester on the Erie Canal Trail. It was really nice. It was. First day was a little bit of a rainstorm we hit <laughs> in there. The second day was very good. Beautiful. Beautiful yeah. weather in there. So good. Stacy covered, we covered almost 100 miles. Yeah. We're pretty much around 100 miles of yeah. stuff. So they're very, very good. Yeah. Very good time. Always an adventure with Brian's thing. <laughs> but so, it was really a lot of fun. It really yeah. was. So we're up here because uh, our daughter is expecting a baby and they're planning to have this reveal mm -hmm. uh, this evening. So we're yeah. excited for that. Grandbaby uh, number two on the way. Yep. Yeah, we have two on the way. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, 1 Samuel chapter 15, pretty long, but we're going to kind of work our way through this. Uh, so Stacy's going to start us off reading and then I'll pick up at some point. The Lord rejects Samuel, Saul as king. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put them to death, men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. So Saul summoned the men and mustered them at Telem, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men from Judah. Saul went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush to the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, Go away and leave the Amalekites, so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites moved away from the Amalekites. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur, to the east of Egypt. He took Agag, king, of the Amalekites alive and all the people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag, the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak they totally destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I am grieved that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone down, gone on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Stop, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Make war on them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I did obey the Lord, Samuel said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took the sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice to the, to the Lord your God at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in bird offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. And then picking up in verse 24, uh, Stacy was reading from the NIV, I'm reading from the ESV. Uh, verse 24, Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. 
Now therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. As Samuel turned to go away, uh, go away, Saul seized the skirt of his robe, and it tore. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day, and has given to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also the glory of Israel will not lie or have regret, for he is not a man that he should have regret. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me, that I may bow before the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul bowed before the Lord. Then Samuel said, Bring here to me Agag, the uh, king of the Amalekites. And Agag came to him cheerfully. Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. Samuel said, As your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hacked Agag to pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Hmm. Right. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father God, as we come in your presence this day, we're mindful that, um, uh, first of all, I just want to, I think we're mindful that, that there's people that are hurting right now because mm -hmm. of uh, Hurricane Ian, people in Florida, people are getting hit right now in South Carolina, North Carolina area. Pray that you would watch over people, protect them, that they would heed the warnings to evacuate. Uh, you know, property can be restored, but lives, uh, they, they can't. So I just ask, Lord God, that they would heed the authorities, uh, go to safe places. Uh, we're thankful, Lord God, though, for your word. We now, as we dig into your word, we pray that you'll give us insight into these uh, happenings, some of them very troubling, um, that are going on, and, and that uh, we would learn uh, lessons from this uh, and apply this to our lives. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, kind of a, as an over, overview here, Saul is given a task, and it's a brutal task. Mm. Uh, the Amalekites had opposed Israel uh, when they were um, freed from captivity in Egypt, did not allow them to pass, were opposed, you know, in opposition to them, and now judgment is coming upon them, and it's total and complete judgment. Uh, everything is supposed to be wiped out men women children all their livestock mm -hmm. everything is to go and so this is a task that uh, Samuel um, got the word from the Lord and, and passes this on to Saul that Saul is supposed to um, go in and act um, so he musters a great army uh, 200,000 men on foot and Judah is called out it's interesting even back here way before uh, you know, Judah is, is, is prominent, but you saw the blood all the way back in Genesis. There's a blessing on Judah. The scepter will not depart from Judah. Mm. Um, so even though Saul's a Benjaminite, uh, from the tribe of Benjamin, uh, there, here's again, the, a, uh, reference to Judah. So 10,000 soldiers from Judah, 200,000 from all the other tribes put together. And uh, so they muster the army, and they pretty much destroy them, pretty much. <laughs> well, it, shows, it says here, too, that he showed kindness to the Kenites, too. Told yeah. Them, go. Right. Go. So they weren't, a part, they weren't a part of yeah. this, this thing. So he did show uh, some kindness. And then there's this... So he's still on track. Yeah. Then there's this destruction that occurs, uh, and they kept the best of the livestock mm -hmm. and it says all that was despised and worthless they devoted to to destruction mm -hmm. in other words eh, stuff's not that, that good anyway mm -hmm. we get you know we'll give that over we'll do what the lord says with that but we're not going we're going to keep the rest mm -hmm. for ourselves and then make up some excuse of, about this and i was thinking to myself that's very convicting to me 
do I give the best of my time to the Lord or what's left over? Do I give the best uh, do we give the best of our offerings to the Lord or what's left over? Do we keep the best for ourselves and then no, oh, there's something left over. Mm-hmm. you know that you know, this can go to the Lord. If I have time at the end of the day, to, to uh, pray for someone, to talk to my neighbor, to love my neighbor. Maybe I'll do that, but if not, you know, it's just, you know, I, I just don't have any time for that. Or, uh, you know, with our, with our offerings, do we really give our first fruits to the Lord, the, the best to the Lord? Or is it like, well, we'll see what it looks like at the end of the month, uh, whether we can give anything or not. Or just because I'm an afternoon thought. I think it's very convicting to me. I just want to say, you know, kind of put us <laughs> under the bus a little bit too. But I think it has to do with routine too. Because just these past couple of days, we're off our routine a little bit. And here we are, you know, up early, getting on our bikes. And yes, we prayed before our bikes. But I, I didn't do my morning devotion. devotion. I mean, yes, I didn't. Ha- I wasn't carrying this in my backpack. But I had my phone. <laughs> right. But yet, we were in a I was out of routine. You know, yeah. did I put God first? Yeah. yeah, we prayed, but not. I didn't do everything I did. So yeah. anyway. So I think there's there's, there's a lesson in, in that right for all of yes. us right off the bat. And um, you see how Saul now is beginning to really lose focus because uh, it struck me um, in verse 12. And Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, and it was told uh, Samuel, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a monument for himself, Mm. and turned and passed on and went down to Gilgal. Wow. Mm. So this this is what the pagan kings would do, right? You set up monuments for yourself. If you remember anything about the the former Soviet Union, or... uh, when Mao Zedong was in charge in, in uh, China, or Xi, Chairman Xi is in charge, what do you see all over the place? Pictures of them hanging mm-hmm. up. Stalin, pictures of Stalin, pic- pictures of, of Mao, pictures of Xi. You know, they like, it's monuments to themselves uh, mm-hmm. that will last only for a short time. But see here, Saul, Saul is losing focus. Mm-hmm. And he's not setting up a monument to the Lord, he's setting up a monument to himself, which is exactly what the kings of the world do. They, 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 they set things up for themselves. So I think that's a big, that little verse there is really a strong mm-hmm. indicator that he is right. going, off, uh, or going off track. Um, and then he's like, oh, look, man, we carry this out, Samuel. We've, yeah. we've done it. We've done it. And Samuel, and Samuel's like, just, just be quiet. What do you think? You think I'm stupid? Mm-hmm. What do you... I hear the bleeding of the sheep, mm-hmm. the mooing of cows. Come on now. you. Oh, but, you know, then he throws his troops under the bus, mm-hmm. right? He's in charge. He's the commander. But he says, well, they took them. They wanted, they wanted them. Uh, the people, they brought, uh, they brought them from the mount, verse 15. They bought, brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep of the oxen. Oh, we're going to make it spiritual too to sacrifice Mm -hmm. them to the lord so we can play this game as well we can spiritualize try to spiritualize something that is really against the lord and we're like oh we're doing this for the lord we're 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 really uh committed you hear that a lot of that in like a prosperity uh gospel area you know like this is the lord's will we're doing this for the lord and okay what you know, are you really, are we really seeking the Lord and, and, and trying and doing this for the Lord or is it for our own benefit? So I think that's, um, that's another important lesson. He just lesson. doesn't get it. Yeah. So he, he, um, he almost he kind of sarcastically says, Samuel says to, to Saul in verse 17, though you're a little in your own eyes. I think they, they mm-hmm. kind of added in yours, uh, verse 17. Maybe you read that again. That's Although you were once small in your own eyes. See, that you... word once is not really there. Okay. <laughs> so, though you are little in your own eyes. And mm-hmm. It's a sarcastic way of saying. So, they're putting in what the meaning of it mm-hmm. is. It's like this sarcastic, yeah, 
you, though you were little in your own eyes, no, you're not anymore. You're setting up monuments to yourself. You're mm-hmm. doing all kinds of stuff now. Um, <clears throat> and the Lord sent you on a mission, and you didn't carry it out. And um, <laughs> Saul's not repentant. Verse 20, mm-hmm. I have obeyed the voice mm-hmm. of the Lord. I have gone on the mission the Lord sent me on. And I brought Agag, the king. Oh, little trivia. It, there's Agag. Do you know that? I do. You saw the footnote? Oh, no. Yeah. I think I know. Go yeah. ahead. You, it's re, he's referenced in the, the book of Esther, the oh. name Agag. I thought it was the left-handed guy. No, oh. no, no. Wrong guy. No. So, so, so Haman... Do you remember the evil Haman mm-hmm. on, in Esther? He wanted to kill uh, Mordecai and mm-hmm. everything like that. So built these gallows, but he himself was hung on it. He was called an Agagite. Agagite. A-G-A-G-I-T. Oh, okay. Agagite. Um, which, I'm not sure if he's a de- descendant of Agag or kind of the character of Agag. You know, like he has that the character of Agag. So anyway, so um, he, they spared Agag, brought him here. Um, and then he throws the people under the bus again, verse 21. But the people took the spoil of the sheep and the oxen, the best of the things, devoted to, sacrifice, devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord their God at Gilgal. I don't even know if that was their intent at all, mm-hmm. or, or they're just like, hey. I think we're, they were just following the leader. Yeah, we want, we want this stuff. Yeah. And then Samuel, uh, in this poetic way of saying mm-hmm. in verses 22 and 23, you know, what is it? the Lord wants. Mm. Does he care about these sacrifices? No, he wants obedience. Mm. He wants us to follow him. Uh, you know, you're going to make a big show. That's not what the Lord asked you to do, to make a big show. Uh, and he says, um, presumption is as iniquity and idolatry, verse 23. Mm. It's idolatry. You make it yourself God. You've made yourself God. This, you did not obey the word of the Lord. You're making yourself into a god. <clears throat> and so, again, here, he shows a little bit of repentance now in verse 24. But I don't think, well, it doesn't seem like he's fully repentant. He says, uh, Saul said to Samuel, I've sinned. So he finally says mm-hmm. it. For I've transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words. Because, see, as soon as we mm-hmm. add the word but, mm-hmm. or because... Because I feared the Lord and obeyed your voice. And obeyed their voice. Mm -hmm. The people. Yeah. So he's kind of blaming the people, Mm -hmm. in a sense. We do that a lot of times when when we say, you know, I sinned, I did what was wrong, but that was because so-and-so really aggravated me and got me worked Mm -hmm. up. Or I did this wrong thing because... I was hungry and tired and worn out, and so I, mm. I just, I just gave in to doing that. Whatever it is, I mean, we we can play we play this game mm-hmm. as well. So Paul, I mean Saul is is uh, is playing this game here. So um, in Samuel says he's not going to return with him, uh, but. He, he, he grabs hold of his yeah, robe. Yeah, I think that's really sad. And tears yeah. part of it off and says, you know, the kingdom's been torn from Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's, that must have been... But he did go back. Now, I see in Samuel the heart of a pastor because he's grieved over mm-hmm. all this. He is praying for him. In fact, it says at the end... Uh, Verse 35, and Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. Mm-hmm. He's, he, and he says in other places, he's like, he's, he is hurting. He's praying for, he's praying for him. Uh, he was so, uh, you know, just crushed by, by what's going on that he's like, wow. You know, so he's this heart of a pastor and saying, mm-hmm. I want this person to change. I want them to turn to the Lord. And it's not, it wasn't too late for Saul to turn to the Lord. He might have still lost the kingdom, but it, you can lose, you know, there's, when we do sin or, or, or break the law in some way, 
uh, whether it's the civil law or the law of God, there are consequences we could face, but that doesn't mean that we can't be forgiven. We may face the temporal consequences. In other words, Saul could have lost the kingdom, would have, you know, and even if he fully and completely repented, maybe he would have lost the kingdom still. But God is gracious, and he would have been he would have been saved in his, you know, saved from his sin by because of the grace of God. So there is temporal consequences mm -hmm. that we, we could face in there. So I don't I don't see what, what we got here. Oh, oh <laughs> well, I yeah. just want to say I think this is very sad because you can see the spirit of the Lord leaving Saul, and I think maybe in our everyday lives we know people like that that once were like believers and they're yeah. slowly getting pulled away yeah i don't think it happens like overnight usually yeah. it's not somebody right. someone doesn't wake up and say dad i'm not going to follow the lord now you know it's, it's a, a very gradual thing and you can see this i mean they're very uh yeah. gruesome sometimes tough things yeah but yet it's a he's slow because he reigned for we said 40 some years 40 years yeah, yeah. so he is so verse 30 is another indicator of his turning slowly from the Lord. Then he said, Saul said, I have sinned, yet honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me. Uh, and it seems like a big concern for him is perception that people mm -hmm. have of him and being honored instead of what's my relationship with God like. It's, it, that's what's count. That's, that should be first and foremost in our, in our hearts. Not like, what do people think of me? What, is, what, is, what about this? What about that? It's, it, it should be, am I in a right relationship with the Lord? Am I, am I following the Lord? And so he seems like he's, you know, he's, he's really concerned about perception. Well, let's Other face it. Perception. If you truly want to follow the Lord, the world today is going to think you're a little bit odd. Yeah, more than a little. More than a little. <laughs> right, yeah. So, uh, and then Samuel carries out the order from the Lord, and King Agag, chop. <laughs> he's, he's chopped up. That's, he's done. Man, Samuel. Samuel's like, that, he's done. Yeah. He's an old guy, too, at this point. Yeah. So, wow. Um, so, that was it. So, anyway, that big, it was a long chapter. I think there's a line in yeah. here. You put in any comments, questions you might have thoughts on this uh anything you wanted to follow up with because uh, i think we're about out of time but yeah. maybe we can pray okay. and maybe you can lead us in prayer all right dear lord thank you so much for this day i just want to um help us to obey your word help mm. us to be strong yeah. help us to holy spirit just lead us and guide us each and every day and i just pray that you would everyone that's hearing this would would heed the words of the lord and again we want to pray with all those People down there that are dealing with Hurricane Ian, uh, yes. please protect them, mm -hmm. Lord. Um, we love you. We just want to serve you and obey you as, as best that we can. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Have a, Have great, a great day, everyone. Take care.